This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1424. 10 Scientific Studies That May Change the Way You Approach Weight Loss, part one, by the NeuroGym team of myneurogym.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Hey there, happy Monday, and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook, and always with a bit of my commentary at the end. Now, don't forget, we have a bunch of shows narrating blogs. Just search for Optimal Living Daily to find all of them. Now, today's post is a bit longer than what I typically narrate. So as usual, I'll read the first half today and then finish it up for you tomorrow. And with that, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. 10 Scientific Studies That May Change the Way You Approach Weight Loss, Part 1 by the NeuroGym team of myneurogym.com. There's no shortage of information on the internet, especially when it comes to weight loss. But the way you view weight loss may change after hearing these scientific studies. And the knowledge you gain by looking at the research may help you develop a mindset to lose weight naturally and keep it off for good. So here they are. One, being way overweight may take a toll on more than just your body. There are so many fad diets circulating and trending out there. It's enough to make your head spin. And do diets even work? Looking at the percentage of those that are obese in the United States and beyond, quote-unquote diets are failing miserably. Obesity has been linked to brain dysfunction before. And now, scientists are starting to wonder what that means for behavior there's a little nugget of your brain that looks kind of like a pea pod. It's called the hippocampus, and it takes care of important tasks, such as memory. A study in the UK revealed that a very high body mass index, or BMI, went hand-in-hand with glitchy, episodic memories, meaning the ability to remember events that happened. Psychologically, this could make you more likely to eat when you're not hungry. If you clearly remember your lunch, you might think twice before mindlessly grabbing a bag of chips from your secret stash. If you're not thinking about the big, juicy, and filling burger you just had two hours ago, you may see a big blueberry muffin and just go for it, even though you're not really hungry. Mindset shift tip. Pay close attention to what you eat and how much of it. Next time you think of munching mid-morning, recall in detail the deliciously crunchy, fruity, whole grain cereal you had for breakfast. Then see if you're still hungry. Two, an important thing moms can do to have healthier kids. You've most likely seen a connection between quote-unquote fit moms and active children. Until now, studies haven't been able to prove anything conclusively. There were too many factors involved. Maybe kids mirror their parents' behaviors, or maybe they have a genetic predisposition to like CrossFit. Researchers at Baylor College of Medicine decided to eliminate those complications and used mice to test the theory. A group of mice were split into two groups, one with a running wheel and one without. The wheel group continued to run each night throughout their entire pregnancy, while the no-wheel group had no choice but to sit and twiddle their paws. Later, after they all gave birth, the mice with running mommies were 50% more active than the other group. And this pattern continued all the way into adulthood. So the conclusion of that research, quote, if a similar effect gets confirmed in humans, it could represent an effective strategy to counteract the current worldwide epidemic of physical inactivity and obesity, end quote. Three, delight in nature's delicious drinkable gift. Are you one of those people who needs coffee ASAP after you get out of bed in the morning? Do you regularly hear things like, whoa, is that your fourth cup? Or, you drink three cups a day? No wonder you're so anxious during meetings. Suffice it to say, coffee has gotten a bad rap in the past. But as long as you aren't contaminating the purity of nature's energy bean with sugar and artificial sweeteners, you're good. That's right. According to Dr. Vasanti Malik, no relation to Dr. Neil, who's a nutrition research scientist at Harvard, up to five cups of coffee a day is perfectly healthy. Numerous studies have proven that coffee has cardiovascular benefits, weight loss benefits, 
and a variety of healthy antioxidants and vitamins. So some say coffee will be your friend on the weight loss journey, partially because of its healthy properties and partly because it gives you more energy to get up and move. Have some coffee with breakfast? Yes. Mid-morning perk? Why not? With lunch? Okay. Before bed? Probably not in that case. Let's not get too crazy here. Four, meat. It's not just for cheat days anymore. In the last decade, steak has spent a lot of time in the doghouse. You hear people say, oh, I would kill for a steak, but my doctor said I should watch my cholesterol. Or, I love red meat, but I'm really trying to lose weight, so I only have it on cheat days. In reality, red meat contains an array of essential micronutrients, such as iron, zinc, selenium, potassium, and a range of B vitamins, including niacin, riboflavin, thiamine, and vitamin B12. What you should probably avoid are heavily processed meats, like salami and cold cuts. Instead, opt for fresh, nutritious, grass-fed beef. Five, when diet and exercise alone don't cut it, a third factor may help you get cut. One big reason people struggle with obesity is that they eat recreationally rather than for the nutrition. Maybe you're stressed in the afternoon, so you grab a Krispy Kreme donut or two. Perhaps you had a bad day at work, so you get home and scarf down your favorite Ben & Jerry's while catching up on season 34 of Survivor. It happens. Actually, it happens a lot. Obesity is an epidemic right now, and stress eating and reward-driven eating are eating away at humanity's health. Food, especially junk food, is super easy to get your hands on, and it gives you a quick, sugary boost that just makes you feel a little better. With this in mind, researchers developed a study. They wondered, can we get people to lose weight by training them to eat more mindfully? The answer, yes. People can benefit from eating mindfully. Two groups of obese individuals went through a matching diet and exercise program. One of the groups also got mindfulness training. Six months later, the second group was eating less for stress and reward, and that led to more weight loss at the 12-month mark. The results were statistically significant, resulting in the conclusion that conscious eating does contribute to weight loss success. Six. Hear that on tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled 10 Scientific Studies That May Change the Way You Approach Weight Loss by the NeuroGym Team of MyNeuroGym.com. My niece comes from a family of doctors and she's had really bad allergies since she was a baby. Something she's actually doing right now is immunotherapy and we've seen it work. It's really promising. So if you have trouble with allergies that's affecting your sleep or fitness or any aspect of your life, check out Curex, a long-term solution for your allergies. Curex is a telehealth platform that offers allergy immunotherapy, which treats the source of your allergies, not just the symptoms, by building up the body's immune response to an allergen. Meet with the doctor online through a simple telehealth consultation, share your allergy history, take an allergy test at home, and receive your customized prescription for immunotherapy right to your door. 50% of Americans suffer from seasonal allergies, and over-the-counter medications aren't a long-term solution and can mess with your microbiome. Try Curex. Find out if you're a fit for immunotherapy at getcurex.com slash OHD and get $75 off your first order with the code OHD. That's getcurex dot com slash OHD, promo code OHD. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Researching the effects of coffee has become somewhat of a hobby of mine. Nerd alert, I know. Now, it's not just because I love me my coffee. It's because it's so misunderstood. Coffee and tea are surprisingly good for us. As you heard in today's article, coffee may help with weight management. Not only that, but multiple, many research studies have found that Coffee may prevent against all sorts of other diseases like liver disease, Parkinson's disease, dementia, and even some forms of cancer. Now the question is, how much do I need to drink each day to reduce my risk for these diseases? Well, you heard in the article that up to five cups a day doesn't seem to be harmful. And in fact, 
many of the studies have found that four to six cups of plain coffee, no added sweeteners or creamers, may do the trick when it comes to disease prevention. Now remember, a cup is eight fluid ounces, about the size of your fist. And we always have to remember that for some of us, drinking coffee each day and in these amounts that we're recommending may cause more harm than good. So I'm talking about those that may be sensitive to caffeine. So here's where I have to sound like a television ad for a medication and say all these disclaimers. Those with certain pre-existing conditions, like ulcers, inflammatory bowel disease, or even IBS, and women that are pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant should talk with their healthcare provider before drinking these amounts of coffee. But if you find that drinking coffee each day doesn't seem to cause you any harm, and you and your doctor agree that it may help you reduce your risk for certain diseases, then enjoy and drink up. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for listening every day. And don't forget, I'll be back here tomorrow to finish up this post. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.